Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Sunday, August 18th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year, and coming in at number 136 is The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Come, my friends, the last match of the Earth. I love The Lord of the Rings. The books, the films, extended universe stuff, all of it. As an unpopular opinion, I even think Rings of Power is really fun once you get over the idea that it's not going to be totally pure to the source material. There are three books, and like the Peter Jackson films, I view the trilogy as one singular item. When you factor in the amount of care that went into creating Middle-earth, such as creating not one, but several fictional languages, each with an entire history pertaining to it so as to make it feel fleshed out and real, writing not only The Hobbit, of course, but then The Lord of the Rings, of course, and The Silmarillion, which is quite literally a fictional history textbook, it's insane. Tolkien was insane. But because of that, he created one of the greatest masterpieces in the history of literature, and I doubt anyone will ever undergo such a massive undertaking in any creative pursuit ever again. Despite this, The Lord of the Rings is not my favorite book, but it's up there for sure. The Peter Jackson films, though? That trilogy is the greatest accomplishment in the history of cinema. Put that all together, plan out all three films with every detail, every prop, every single thing you see or hear being approved by Jackson ahead of time, and then start filming without releasing a single film until you were finished with all of it? Also insane. I know this video isn't really about the books or the films, but all of this is to say that I view this game is just the capstone in a trilogy that I view as one single, larger game, and this ranking is for the three of them combined. The books are timeless masterpieces. The films are timeless masterpieces. These games are pretty good. You play through the stories of the trilogy as different characters, though some of the pacing and layout is a bit different to make it fit to each game. A lot of the things also get expanded on to make it fit into the game. For example, this game, The Return of the King, actually starts off redoing a handful of things towards the end of the two towers, basically to give players that somehow skipped that some context for everything else they'll be doing. The whole game is narrated by Sir Ian McKellen, who plays Gandalf in the films, so that's pretty amazing. In fact, Pretty much the entire cast of the films continued their roles to voice their characters in these games. You can even unlock interviews with the cast and other behind the scenes stuff related to the game by clearing the levels. Each level starts by picking a character to play as from amongst the people that are present in that part of the story. Throughout the games, you can play at some point as most members of the Fellowship, though of course after the Fellowship breaks up, your options get splintered for the different levels. Each character has a handful of similar attacks, like everyone has a melee light attack, a melee heavy attack, and some kind of ranged attack. Apparently Gimli carries a gigantic amount of throwing axes now? <laughs> but some are obviously better at different things than others. Chain together combos and kill a bunch of orcs. Most of the regular enemies are pretty straightforward, though there's some stuff you'll have to adjust for, like shields and ranged enemies and such. The boss fights, however, can get pretty involved with unique strategies for each one, and there was clearly extra effort put in to make them interesting beyond just copying what's done in the source material. For example, in the books and films, when Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli head into the Creepy Mountain to recruit the Army of the Dead, they get threatened by them, but they don't really fight, per se. In this game, you fight a whole lot of them, and the boss does a lot of fancy, spooky ghost stuff, which is a lot of fun and even takes some practice to get the moves down. Now, I'm not saying this game is a Souls-like, but there's something there. After you clear a level, the character you played as gains experience from all sorts of stuff you did, but mostly killing. 
Keeping your combo meter higher gets more experience per kill, so there's a point-like incentive there. What leveling up actually does for you is that you unlock different upgrades you can purchase with the experience points you've earned, either for the individual character, or if you're being economical about it in the long run, for every character. At least for the upgrades that work across every character. Some upgrades are character specific, and as you level everyone else, they really grow into their own playstyle, which is a lot of fun to explore. This leveling system gives the game a lot of replayability, as many sections of the game have different options for who you play as, like the main sequences involving the trio of Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. Generally speaking, film crossover games are, well, not great. But there's a few on my rankings, and these ones definitely hold up well. They hold up so well, in fact, that they're the highest ranked film-to-game adaptations on my whole list. Granted, this does not include games that are based on film properties, as this isn't even the highest ranked Lord of the Rings game I'll be talking about, and there's still another Star Wars game I have to talk about. But that's all for another day. Join me tomorrow as I talk about my 135th favorite game where I put a plumber in a fursuit.